Coming up tonight on YCN News, Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin signs a near $686 million transportation bill into law. Road work in Hanover and Lebanon, New Hampshire is announced. And Brattleboro's Police Chief Gene Wren announces his intent to retire this month. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, Southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening and welcome to this Monday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. It was a busy weekend for area firefighters early Saturday morning. Erin McClory has more. I'm at 34 Sullivan Street in Newport, the location of a suspicious fire that was reported at 4.30 Saturday morning. The fire set to this vacant house was one of four that took place within a mile of each other in a three-hour time span. The first fire was reported at 1.20 Saturday morning at a dumpster on Laurel Street. Fifteen minutes later, there was a report of an external structure fire on Maple Street. A second external structure fire was reported on Central Street less than an hour later. Last was the fire set here to this vacant house. In total, six fire departments responded to the calls. The New Hampshire State Fire Marshal is looking into the cause of the four suspicious fires started Saturday morning in a densely inhabited area of Newport. With YCN News, I'm Erin McClory. Newport Police Chief James Burroughs could not be reached today for comment. Meanwhile, Sullivan County Attorney Mark Hathaway also is working with state and local authorities on this ongoing investigation. Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin today signed a near $686 million transportation bill into law, the largest investment in transportation improvements in Vermont's history. The fiscal year 2015 transportation bill covers many aspects of transit from land, air, and rail. Today's signing is a show of support for the State Agency of Transportation, or VTRANS, too. Improvements are in line with the agency's plans for safe and efficient private and public transportation options. By the numbers, the infrastructure projects include $115.7 million for road paving. This funding will improve about 95 miles of interstate and 210 miles of state highway through road resurfacing and money to maintain the improved roadway from wear and tear. $50 million for roadways, especially along rural roads in west central Vermont, $13.3 million for highway safety and traffic upgrades, $2.7 million for park and ride facilities to encourage bus commuting, $29.8 million for public transit. Shumlin says the benefits of this near $30 million investment would allow for more mobility, especially among the state's aging population. And it's in line with the state's image as a green and eco-friendly place. Among the state's larger cities, more bus connections may be established, too. For business travelers, especially improvements at regional airports may boost the state's economy. In all, $19.9 million is marked for aviation, also $37.3 million for rail. Expanding rail service in the state's northern tier is a focus. Lastly, $108.7 million for town highway programs. Much of this money is from federal or FEMA public assistance grants. Shumlin thanked the legislature for recognizing that a strong economy requires a 21st century infrastructure while standing on a new bridge project in Morrisville. Speaking of road work and transportation improvements, motorists are advised of a project in Hanover that may last four to six weeks. Southern New Hampshire company Liberty Utilities is planning to install 1,700 feet of new underground facilities on South Main Street in Hanover. The work will start at the substation near Brook Road to the Ripley Road area. New manholes, ducts, and electric wires will be installed. To remove the wires and other related items already in place and complete the upgrades, work may need to be done at night, town leaders say. Once the infrastructure is in place, new conductors will be installed. Cable installation will be performed in the fall of 2014. Meanwhile, there's road work in Lebanon, too. 
Construction work on Grove Street, Foster Street, and Willow Street will begin today and is scheduled to continue through next Tuesday, June 10th. Work will include roadway paving and sidewalk reconstruction. Motorists are asked to avoid this area if possible as road closures and delays will occur. If you must travel around the work zone, please exercise caution for workers and equipment in the road. To learn more, contact the Lebanon Public Works Department at 603-352-6550. At New London Hospital and Newport Health Center, we are focused on helping you get well and live well. We serve the greater Kearsarge, Sunapee Upper Valley Region community with quality health care in a patient and family-centered environment. New London Hospital is in your neighborhood, providing primary and specialized services in its state-of-the-art facility. To learn about our services and our compassionate doctors, visit newlondonhospital.org. New London Hospital, your prescription for living well. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. This afternoon, the Brattleboro Reformer reported that Police Chief Gene Wren announced that he will retire near the end of June. He has served the Brattleboro area for almost 28 years, having been hired originally back in 1986. In 1989, he rose to sergeant, and in 1990, he graduated from Keene State College and used his schooling to broaden the department's computer forensics. In 2002, he was promoted to captain and six years later was appointed the chief of police, the reformer reported. He is well known for his impact on the community through his program that involved regular on-foot patrols in the downtown area. He plans to retire by June 27th, and as of now, the town manager's office will seek to fill his position. YCN News will keep you updated along the way. Hi, this is Anita from Brattleboro Mobile at Exit 3. The store now offers more products you can pick up when you're on the go. Green Mountain Coffee, drinks and snacks, beer and wine, and hopefully your next winning lottery ticket. Also, Brattleboro Mobile has added diesel fuel to go along with the three different grades of superior mobile gasoline. And remember, we have a courteous staff, a brand new look, and a convenient location all at Brattleboro Mobile. See you soon. Brattleboro Mobile, on the roundabout at Exit 3. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next few days and then move on to high school sports. Thanks, Rose. Tonight we'll have patchy fog after 3 a.m. with lows around 57 degrees and winds near 5 miles per hour. The rest of the week we're expecting some rain starting tomorrow with a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms after 10 a.m. Fog will be patchy before 9 a.m. and skies will be partly sunny with highs in the 80s. Winds will range between 5 and 10 miles per hour. Tuesday night we have a 60% chance of rain with lows in the upper 50s and calm winds. Wednesday we'll have a high of 73 degrees with winds around 5 miles per hour. We'll have a 50% chance of rain during the day and a 40% chance that night. Wednesday evening will be cloudy with lows in the 50s. Our northeastern map shows that there are some strong showers and a 50% chance of thunderstorms headed our way. You can see here how widespread the approaching storm is. These storms will last the next few days with lesser chances of rain from Thursday on. Now let's see what's coming up on our community calendar. Tomorrow evening in Vermont, the Brattleboro Select Board will meet at 6 p.m. and the Woodstock Select Board will meet at 7 p.m. On Wednesday, the Danbury, New Hampshire Board of Selectmen will meet at 6 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. Now it's time for local high school sports. We have some special victories to report on. First up, the Kearsarge High School boys track and field team now possesses their second win in a row of the Division III state championship. The finals took place this past weekend. Secondly, the New England College rugby team tore up the college sports scene by winning the National Small Rugby Organization's Sevens National Championship. NEC faced the New Mexico Highlands yesterday in Pennsylvania and won 22-14. Congratulations to our teams. 